SlothTube. My name is Becca and I'm Sam Bree Stitches here on SlothTube and Instagram. And today is another special edition of Interview with a SlothTuber. And I have two very special guests. I'm very excited um, to introduce you to Amy and Gary. Um, Amy is a longtime friend. She's the founding member of our local cross-stitching group. And um, she also just recently started a SlothTube. And um, she's still fairly new, but her channel is blowing up. Um, everybody is talking about it, and it's just great. Um, and I wanted to have Gary in here, too, because he is the man behind the video with the editing. So we're going to learn a little bit more about both of them. So very excited to introduce you guys. So how are you doing today? We're doing really well. And um, Gary, Gary will be here soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so the first question is, why did you start a flock tube and were there any particular motivation? Um, so I thought about starting a floss tube for a really long time before I actually did it. And um, there were a couple reasons. And um, I think the first one was I wanted a better way to sort of document my stitching and, and the work that I was doing. Um, and I really, I just, I love the forum and the, and the format that floss tube provides for that. Um, and so being able to kind of have that, that visual record over time of things progressing and, and, um, I really loved that the idea of being able to do that. So that was part of it. And then I think, um, the other thing is this is just such a phenomenal community. It's, it's a really special place. And I think we all know that. Um, and the, the, the more I got involved in it and when we, you know, when we first started our local stitching group and just being able to share um share my stitching with friends and to build those relationships was just really so enjoyable and so special that um i wanted to have an opportunity to just get more involved in the stitching community in a, in a bigger way so um yeah i think those are like the the big motivations for me yep and you definitely did you entered in a very big way everybody's loving your <laughs> channel um and I know that we had talked about it for ever since we started the group that, you know, a few of us wanted to do a, a floss tube video and we kind of helped support each other and encourage each other. I think that's kind of what motivated me to start was just, you know, everybody kind of pushing me to do it. So, yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely would not have gone forward with it without all of the encouragement from local friends and, and him, and, you know. And <laughs> And him. He was a, that guy. Him. <laughs> that guy that actually um, is going to answer the next question. Um, what is, what's the most rewarding thing about filming a Fox Tube episode with Amy? For me? Yes. Yeah, for you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you were the one that records. <laughs> am, I, am I part of this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, the, the easiest part is uh, well, it's easy answer that without Amy's support, I wouldn't be literally doing what I'm doing. Um, and uh, to be able to use everything I've learned in the t in the tools I have to help her with her deal, uh, it's it's kind of rewarding. It's not it's it's rare that you can actually pay back um, your your um, your patron, if you will, you know. Um, and so it's, that that's what I'm that's what I like about it. You actually do, it, it's awesome that you, all the little things that you enter, I think it was the last video with your, you put a picture of yourself in there. I think that was the most, I was cracking up. That was <laughs> all the, and I think, and not that it takes anything away from Amy because you do an amazing job, you know, showing your pieces and talking and, but I think it's all the little extra professional like editing that I think people are really falling in love with. Um, just well, makes laugh, cool. all the sound effects and everything. Yeah, I completely agree. He brings in so much personality and um, charisma of his own, and I love that 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 gets its way in there. And the fun thing for me is that he does not tell me, like, if there are specific things that are related to the stitching, he'll come and ask me, you know, do we have a photo of this or we need to get a photo of that or whatever. But when it comes to like those little moments, he doesn't tell me about those. Like, I get to see those on the last viewing in the in the first review yeah 
I get to see the final or the first review before we think about well, it. Final. Yeah, I get to watch it like once before it gets posted, and so you'll hear he'll hear me like ha, 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 laughing at like all the little things that he throws in there that I had no idea he was going to put in, and I love it. Well, the hard part is, is to not go overboard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's so not far about, you've yeah. done well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've done well. That's kind of like seeing your video for the first time then, because you know what you said, but the going back and watching it after, you know, you not doing the editing, because I just do simple iMovie basic. That's it. <laughs> it's not fun watching it back. <laughs> um, so the next question is a subscriber question, um, and they were just wondering if either of you had a blog. No, no blog for me. It's, uh, it's, it's just so much work. I. People who can keep up with a blog amaze me, but yeah, I know Priscilla from the Real Housewives keeps up her blog like seriously. <laughs> on the blog. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just text you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want you to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have a website though, right, Gary? Me? Yeah. Yes, I do. Which I need to update, but I do have a website. Okay. Uh, and uh, Instagram and Facebook presence. Oh, nice. I'll make sure to put links down below for everything that we, cool. we talk about to you. So we'll make sure we have that down below. So. Nice. Um, so Amy, how did you learn to stitch and how long have you been stitching? So I learned to stitch. I, I think I am self-taught um, because I learned so long ago that it's hard to remember exactly. So I know I started stitching in like 1987, 1988. So I was a child. Mm -hmm. um, and I know there was a, a lady in our church who my mom would drop me off at her house and she taught me how to hand sew pillows and things like that. But I, I know she didn't teach me how to cross stitch. Um, and there was also like a sewing circle at the church and I, my mom would drop me off and I would go hang out with them. But I remember already knowing how to stitch by the time I joined them. And so I think that I just picked out a kit that I liked and followed the directions and kind of figured it out from there. Um, so yeah, that was kind of where I got my start. And been going ever since. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And the funny thing is, I remember my mom, like the very first thing I ever tried to stitch was one of those plastic canvas where you do like the half oh, stitch. Yep. Um, and I hated that. I did not enjoy it at all. And my mom, I talked my mom into getting me a like a large size design of a, a green, not a greenhouse, like a... Um, gazebo okay. <laughs> it's like not an outhouse <laughs> a gazebo in a garden with trees and it was beautiful not an outhouse it was not an outhouse there was no outhouses in my garage because that was the word that kept coming to mind and i was like i did not stitch an outhouse that's funny <laughs> i did see was, at goodwill an outhouse stitching actually oh really I did. yeah at our <laughs> that's amazing I wasn't quite that close to buying it you know what? I need to get my dad would love to stitch that because my dad is a stitcher and he would love to stitch an outhouse. That's his, that would be totally his game. I'm pretty sure there's patterns out there. There was one at Goodwill. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Gary, you're not a stitcher, but have you ever considered picking up stitching? <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> I thought went went right in one side, I guess. I don't know what happened to it once I got in there, but um, there is a um, there is one cross stitch that I would do. It's a I keep holding my finger up, but you can't see it. There's one um, cross stitch that I would do. It's a movie poster for the movie Alien. It's all black. It's got the egg on it. Just it looks good. I would do that one. I think that would be really cool with glow in the dark box. Oh. It could be really neat. Yeah, because I'm really big into the glow in the dark cloth. Oh, that would be so yeah. cool, wouldn't See, it? There you go. I'll buy you the glow in the dark cloth. We'll get you set up and you can get it started. There you go. I'll have an extra <laughs> Q snap you can use. You're set. Yep. Be my nightlight. <laughs> it glows pretty good. <laughs> um, so, uh, Amy, what's the favorite project that you've stitched so far? So we've got two of them. They're both big. Um, one was uh, Little Wings by Lavender and Lace. And that was one that I stitched for my aunt a number of years ago. It's the the mother in the big green bustle dress and um, with her daughter. And there's like a birdhouse. And it's it's beautiful. Uh, we showed it on, I think, video number two. Um, and I, I just, 
that's always been one of my favorite designs. I really love it. And I really enjoyed stitching her and it was really hard to give her away because I think she's so pretty. Um, and then the other one was a couple of years ago, I stitched the Snow Queen by Mirabilia. Um, and she is just, she's a stunner. She's so sparkly and so pretty. And um, it's always hard to put her away after the holiday season. And yeah, because she's, yeah, she's, she's a really special design. She is beautiful. She's gorgeous. I don't yeah. know how you do it because I know you stitch all those large, intricate pieces and then you give them away. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Let me tell you something. This is like, I probably shouldn't say this because the, this person, well, no, I don't think she'll see this, but I, oh, God. Go I, again. Let's go downhill from here. This is a downhill train, people. Um, I stitched Celtic Autumn for a friend of mine about 20 years ago. And um, it's, full of beads and metallic threads. And so it's not a cheap piece to stitch anyway. And then I had it professionally framed. And even 20 years ago, that cost over a hundred dollars to get that professionally framed. Um, and I gave that to a friend of mine as a gift and I never once saw it hang in her house. And then she moved a couple of years ago and it mysteriously vanished in the move. And I'm not saying that that happened in, on purpose, but I, at that point I was like, I will think long and hard about, who I gift my stitching to going forward because yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. I, my, I basically stitched small, but, um, there was a small, like little Lizzie Kate piece that I had mm -hmm. stitched and, um, my friend wanted to give it to her sister. And, um, so I was like, Oh, fine. You know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I was shopping in our local Goodwill. I bought back my stitched piece from Will and I was crying in the aisle. So I, oh, I, feel, I feel your pain on that because even yeah. no matter how big the piece is, yours was insanely <laughs> intricate though. <laughs> it still is just, it's heartbreaking. Because glad you got it back. Love. Yeah, I'm glad I got it back too. I, they didn't want, they, they were like, oh, you don't have to pay for it. And I'm like, I will buy it back. I don't need to give it back. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the thing. I wish that yeah. you would have gotten your piece back if she, you know she didn't want it it's just it's heartbreaking so, yeah yeah I don't I don't really gift anymore <laughs> yeah it's like a knife in the heart it is it is because there's so much work and people don't realize how much time goes into these pieces so wow. it's like video editing yeah <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your video editing though do you mind me <laughs> um so Gary, what is your favorite piece that Amy has stitched? Oh, and the, the um, what's, I keep wanting to say peace, but I don't think peace is in the truth. Purity, strength, truth. Purity, strength, truth. What she said, those words. <laughs> it's the um, the it's the Buddha, I guess. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> has uh, the Japanese characters. Yeah, that piece was gorgeous, and that's also intricate, right? That that took you a little while to do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so Amy, what do you enjoy most about stitching? Um, I think I really a couple of things. One is the the meditative quality that it has for me and how it really is so relaxing. Like I can have an incredibly stressful day, an incredibly exhausting day, and if I can get down and spend 25, 30 minutes even just with my stitching. I really start to feel myself unwind. My brain disengages from all the things that are since, you know, cycling through and it's really restful for me. So that's, that's one part of it. I think the other thing is I'm not naturally a super creative person. Um, like I'm not the person who can compose a, a piece of music or draw anything. I can draw stick people and they are not good stick <laughs> people. <laughs> I'm not artistic at all. And so being able to do something. She is, she is artistic. In different ways. In different ways. <laughs> in structured ways. Yeah, but being able to follow somebody else's directions and, and to take, you know, fibers and turn them into art is so amazing to me because without without that pattern I couldn't do that. Um but so also change like the, the color scheme. So that takes a certain level of uh, creativity yep. too. Mm -hmm. so it's, yep. It's it's, it's not absent. Um, she's not a creative <laughs> and I think I just made up a word you did. there you go that's a new word 
Um, so what is your favorite genre of book or movie? I don't read. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> not enough time. <laughs> I have two. One is historical fiction. Um, I love good historical fiction. Um, I love accurate historical fiction. That um, me too. Me, yeah. No, you like too. just you like history. I'm I like fiction, but historical sorry. fiction. Excuse me. <laughs> me. Me zero. <laughs> he likes the yeah. He likes the histories and the biographies and all that. And I like. Yeah, the fictionalized histories and biographies, but I want them to be accurate and true to the time that they were Wait, written about. You want fiction to be accurate? Hush. Okay. <laughs> we're not going to do this right now. <laughs> not right now. Here goes the quarantine. Right. <laughs> it all ends here, people. Put down that laser scroll. <laughs> <laughs> so that and fantasy. I love fantasy and like, if, if authors that can find a way to like combine the two are among my favorites. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we kind of answered yours a little bit. Did you want to add anything to you? Uh, Sci-fi and I'm sorry, uh, comedy. I love comedy. I would, I would tell you what my favorite movie is in the world, but no, no it's, I'm not okay. going to do that. No. It's not, yeah. No. <laughs> I was going to say yeah. it's probably not, yeah. not PG or something for the, the video. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's not what you would call correct. It'll offend all the sensibilities. It offends everyone, and that's why I like it. And that's okay. that's all I'll say. Yes. Comedies are just whatever they want to be, as long as they make you laugh. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Oh. All right. Um, so what fictional place would you like to go? You could. For me, I would say um, either Middle Earth, uh, so Lord of the Rings. <laughs> oh, thank you. She likes hairy feet. Very <laughs> <laughs> um, and Or Narnia. <laughs> or Narnia. I'd love to go to Narnia. Narnia um, would be awesome. I, I, I like Narnia. That, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> oh, I'm still laughing at that. <laughs> um, how about you, Gary? <laughs> I I can't think of one to be honest with you. I really, um, yeah, you know what? Uh, Starship Troopers, wherever they were, those guys fighting the oh, bugs. Okay. That's where I'd be. Yeah, those big old giant bugs or spiders or whatever they were. Is that is that what it is? Starship Something like that. Yeah. But again, I no, not really. Again. I may be the laundry guy though. I wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be the guy. Whatever. No guns for me. Just tied in some water. You would be a great starship captain. <laughs> I'd be like that way. <laughs> so Yeah. All right, Amy. So if you could do anything for a day, what would it be? Um <clears throat> So part of me wants to say I would cross stitch for a whole day because it's been a long time since I've been able to do that. <laughs> That's not <sound> amazing. <laughs> it would be so dreamy. Sometimes I fantasize about like renting a hotel room and just, sorry, bears climbing up on the couch here, um, and just going away for a day with nobody to interrupt me. Do you want me to put him on I so he can like, say hi? He can make a yeah. cameo in the recording. <gasps> hi, hi. Oh, I miss him. He's so sweet. You've got to come visit him. I know. Everybody just got to meet there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, I think other than having like a whole uninterrupted day of, of stitching, um, the thing I would do if I had like just any way to spend a day would be I'd go hiking with my dad. Um, we used to be like constant hiking and backpacking buddies and we were, we would go out almost every weekend and go new places and do stuff. And um, his health has really declined in the last 10 years, um, particularly the last five years. And he's just not like physically, he cannot do it anymore. Um, and so I know he misses it and I miss that time with him. And so I think that would be, if I could do anything for a day, that would be that. It would be get back out into the woods and the mountains with my dad and go on an adventure. Oh, well, that sounds amazing. It's so heartbreaking that I'm not able to go and do that. But at least like, you could put together like montage pictures of maybe you and Gary going out and doing mm -hmm. videos and stuff like that just to bring him from the outdoors. But it's, it's not the same, but at least it would help. 
So, yeah, I did a, um, a, a for a Christmas present for him a couple of years ago when we started realizing that he wasn't going to be able to do much hiking. Um, I did a, a photo book of like a lot of our different adventures and he's a big Lord of the Rings fan. And so I called it um, there and back again, a hiker's tale. And it was like the story of our hiking adventures yeah. and all of our, all of our misadventures because my dad was like, I swear we never went backpacking without him creating some kind of drama, like oh, search and rescue or, you know, having the Rangers come in to rest, you know, like hike us out, like, always adventures and misadventures oh wow, wow. yeah that sounds that sounds fun but <laughs> it's scary too scary too good memories good memories for sure good memories yeah that's great yeah. um so uh do you have any other hobbies besides stitching um and then we'll get into i want to talk a little bit about your photography um after okay cool um, I have a couple other hobbies, but stitching does tend to consume most of my hobby time. Um, I do bake, um, and I love to do puzzles, and I love to hike. Um, what else? And I like to read. Those are kind of the big ones. The all nice and relaxing mm -hmm. hobbies. <laughs> all very, all very solitary activities when you think about it, for the most part. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hiking could be, you know. Hiking could be shared among friends. Yeah. Hiking should be. You should never hike by yourself. That's true what he says. That's true. That's but I, I've done it. The same thing. So, yeah. Um, so, Gary, uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about, you know, your photography and your, your video editing, kind of so we can learn a little bit more about you since you don't get to be in the, the Floss Tube videos? Sure. Um... Not sure. If I don't want to say too much, but I want to say enough, right? Um, well, I really enjoy taking pictures, and I've been doing it for a long, long time. But um, I haven't really been paying attention uh, when taking pictures, except for the last several, several years or so. Um, and uh, I worked in technology for a long time. I was testing streaming media on mobile devices when nobody even really considered what streaming media was yet. So that, that's what I was doing back then. And that was fun. And then I worked with databases. And now I have my own business, basically, my own digital media business, which right now focuses on photography and, and uh, mid-range interview type stuff in terms of videography. But it's something I've always wanted to do, you know. Um, tell stories. Uh, I get to take pictures of all kinds of stuff. I mean, whatever I want, really, a grain of sand, a building, you know, whatever I want, whatever combination. Um, I can use, uh, I'm really good with the Adobe suite of products. Anyway, I just really enjoy taking pictures. If you check out <laughs> GMP Media One is my uh, Instagram, and um, there's a few of my, some of my work is up there. I put the fun stuff up there. Um, nothing I'm really trying to hold on to. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's what I do. I like telling stories and capturing stories. I know Amy has posted some of your uh, pictures of like the flowers. I think I showed some of yours in one of my videos. Um, hmm. on Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. They're gorgeous. And, and um, that was during the time where, you know, I was trying to, to keep everybody uplifted because that was like right in the middle of, you know, quarantine lockdown, but those, the, the photos of the flowers, that's what I've seen. Those are gorgeous, gorgeous. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely put links down below so that people can go in and check it out, um, for sure, because your, your work is amazing. And it's just nice to kind of get to meet the person behind, you know, Amy's videos and, and all the cool little editing techniques and stuff like that. So. Well, I spent a long time as a drummer, so I know what it's like to just be back there. <laughs> back. Yeah. What's that guy doing? Oh, leave him alone. Don't feed him. Don't feed him. Don't feed him. <laughs> um, so the next question is, um, how would your friends describe you? Oh, this is a hard one. Um, I kind of wish Gary hadn't like dodged out for a second because I would, I'm curious to see what he thinks. I think my friends would describe me as fairly quiet, especially in a group setting. Um, 
mostly kind, but a little bit, a little bit snarky sometimes. And um, I think they would say I'm probably like a little bit overly structured and hardworking. What? Describe what? Yeah. How How would my friends describe me? How would, How do you think of my friends would describe me? Oh no. I don't, I don't like your friends. Oh. <laughs> oh, that hurt my feelings. Come on, Come on now. <laughs> I'm not serious. I think all of her friends are, are cool. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was not serious. She has some, some terrific friends. What do I think they'd say about her? Uh, I, I think <clears throat> that some of the more honest ones would say she's too nice. Um, but none of them would say anything negative. Um, she's just she, she's always trying to, to help you. Uh, where she can, um, she has just has a good heart. I don't want to get all weird. <laughs> she has a good she heart. Does. She definitely does have a good heart. She Everything is. it would sum up to that, really. Whatever they said. Yeah, very sweet. Yeah. And I can say that those are all two because I <laughs> you are pretty awesome. <laughs> um. So, uh, Amy, how do you prefer to stitch? Do you do in hand, Q snap, frame, that kind of stuff? Um, I definitely have to have either a Q snap or a scroll frame. Um, and the funny thing is, I like the majority of the time. So I started when I first started stitching, I always used a hoop. And then for like 20 plus years, I stitched in hand. And then I went back to Q snap. I went to a Q snap or a scroll rod a couple of years ago. And I don't know how I stitched that long in hand because it makes me crazy. I need to have like the nice hot fabric. Um, yeah. And the, yeah, the tighter, the better. So definitely have to have a Q-snap. I have um, a floor lamp, uh, an alt light floor lamp that, I, another thing, I, I don't know how I used to stitch without like surface of the sun illumination. I know, right? <laughs> it's, I have to have so much light. Um, yes, yes, she does. <laughs> Do you get blinded? Because my husband's like, why are you blinding me with my alt light? <laughs> Well, for the longest time, I used to play video games in the dark, and now I don't remember what that was like. <laughs> what dark? <laughs> Finally, he told me a couple of months ago, he's like, you know, I can see your light reflected in the video game screen, and that's why I keep turning the TV, and I was like, oh, I had no idea. Yeah, it'd be like this, imagine a dot just on the screen, just this yeah. white dot on the screen. So I would turn the television, and she would come over and turn it back because <laughs> it wasn't right. It wasn't aligned. It wasn't straight. Yeah. It needed to be straight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's why. I was inviting I, evil spirits or something. I don't know. <laughs> that's why me and my husband are on opposite sides of our family room. So he's got one half where he games on the TV and then I have the other half and I still turn my light and it shoots right at him on the couch, but at least it doesn't affect the game. <laughs> Oh, she's a migrant coucher. <laughs> she, like, she goes all over the place. She's like, what? she's like a nomad. Wherever you come to me. Yeah, <laughs> hey, here's a spot. <laughs> That's a new one. That's funny. Um, and then, Amy, what's your preferred fabric? Um, definitely linen or even weave. Um, I've been stitching on linen or even weave almost uh, over 25 years now. Um, I need to go back and give Ada a try because I know, like, I know you are the ultimate, the queen of the Ada stitchers, and um, it seems like it's so much better than it used to be. Uh, but I just have these terrible memories of Ada that was so stiff you couldn't get your hoop to go over it. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. It was bad. It was really bad when yeah. I started. It's still a year ago. I wouldn't have known what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny now that he's like making the videos with me. How like he'll just little pop up with these things like a needle. We could make a needle minder out of that. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> How do you know this now? <laughs> you start dabbling in needle minders. Let me know. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's yeah. I guess you picking up like different things with stitching and, and learning about it just because you're doing the videos. That's kind of neat. Yeah. It'll help whenever you start that, you know. <laughs> exactly, when he starts his alien design. That's funny, I'm not going to let that go. Um, 
So um, the next question is kind of for both of you to answer is um, where is your favorite place that you've traveled? And then Amy, did you bring stitching along with you when you went? Uh, so I, I, do you want to answer first? Because I feel like I'm always answering first unless you want to answer second. You, you kind of answered already. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't answer the question. You know, but just go okay, for it. I'm gonna go. Do your thing. Okay, so this is part of the reason I'm putting it off is because this is really hard for me to answer. Like, if I could answer by region, that'd be easier. Yeah. Um, Hold on, Bear. Okay. So, <laughs> Bear Pants. Um, if we're talking, like, Europe, I'd say Scotland or the Czech Republic. Love both of them. Um, just such beautiful countries. Um, Prague is hands down the most beautiful human like man-made place I've ever been it's such a beautiful city and I love it and Scotland is is not far behind it's just such an amazing rich um, like beautiful place and such history and culture and so I, I love those two if we're talking like Africa I would say my favorite place is Kenya oh, wow. um, I, I love Kenya it's just I have a lot of great memories there. I spent a lot of time there, and so it's. There's <laughs> just opinions. <laughs> opinions. It's it's amazing. Like the, it's um, yeah, it's an incredible country, and um, it's actually not too hot. I think people people automatically assume that all of Africa is unbearably hot, but yeah. it's actually not. Like you you automatically envision the savanna and you know the the safari you know areas. But there are some places, and Kenya is a great example. Nairobi, I've been there more often than not, where I've been like, man, I really want a jacket. It's wow. um, so it's it's an amazing country with such diverse ecosystems and incredible people, and so I love it there. Um, and then I think my other favorite place I've traveled is New Zealand. Um, we have talked on many occasions about we would just love to to pick up and move to New Zealand and and never come back. We really oh, love wow. it. Wow. That would make me really sad. North, North <laughs> Island. Wow. You've been all over the place, and that's with work, right? You've, you've traveled mostly yeah, for work. Did you ever bring Stitch in with you? I know you were probably working a lot, but. I work a lot, but um, I always I always bring stitching for the plane and for the really long, um, <laughs> the really long layovers. Um, it's their travel kit. <laughs> <laughs> it's travel. Yes. It's got her stuff in there. <laughs> Look at him, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I always take some kind of stitching with me when I travel. Um, so, pardon me. So oh, yeah, it um I yeah when I'm actually in a place, um I don't generally get to do much because it's long days of meetings or long days on the road and um, but at least on the airplanes and and airports, it has saved my sanity more than once. Yep, I bring stitching everywhere. Yeah. About the car dealership this morning. I was stitching. There you to go. Five. Yeah. There you go. What about um, you? Where's your favorite place? Yeah. What? My favorite place that I've traveled? Mm -hmm. uh, by myself or with her? or, or... <laughs> Just where your favorite place that you, you've got. Right. It doesn't have to be together. It's... Well, I'll list two that were out without her. Uh, one is Hammerfest, Norway. Incredible town. Uh, Vina del Mar, Chile. And uh, with Amy, be Copenhagen, York, and uh, again, New Zealand, right? Wow. So those would be, yeah. He's also traveled everywhere. <laughs> yeah. He was, he was in the Navy and in the Army. Um, and so especially in his Navy years, he was all over the place. All over the place. I'm not, I'm not in the military anymore. <laughs> Thank you for your service. My husband was also, and he actually went to Norway too. I never got oh, cool. to that cool stuff, but yeah, he he traveled all over too. So, so yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so the next question is for Amy: What can you not do without for your stitching? Like your favorite go-to must-have? <laughs> Time. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us stitchers ask <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think um, I'm gonna. I mean, like at the most basic level, I'm gonna say like a Q snap and a light. Yep. Those are definite must have. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and the next question is, how do you decide on what you're gonna work on next? 
So um, if we're talking, so there's a couple ways I can answer this. One is I have a rotation. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've got a, like a four piece rotation that I work on one piece for a full week. And then I switch to my next piece and my rotation, I have it set up where each spot in the rotation has like a specific purpose. So I want to make sure I can stitch my fancy ladies and my samplers and my full coverage and my seasonals. Um, and so the only way I can do that is like assign one of those categories to each slot and then I'll work on whatever that current piece is. So I always know what's coming up next and I don't start anything new until I've finished something and I have an open spot and a rotation in the rotation. And then I have a one, like a rotation for not a rotation, but I also have a travel stitching like he was showing that I'll work on. Um, so as far as like just day to day stitching, that's how I decide is whatever's coming up next in the rotation. So and you decide like if you get five new, whatever, right. What are they patterns are they called? Charts. Chart. Yeah. So you get five new charts, and you put them in your rotation. There's still an order there. How do you decide which one what I'm gonna start is next. a higher priority in your rotation? So, um, I have a spreadsheet. That's my chart organization spreadsheet. <laughs> what he was getting at? Now he's don't be embarrassed because I actually uh -huh. have a, a thing that organizes my charts and everything too. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I have different tabs on my spreadsheet for different kinds of stitching. And so I'll, when I buy a new chart, it goes into the spreadsheet. And then, um, and I, there's different ways of classifying it in the spreadsheet. But what I'll do is each year at the beginning of the year, I'll go through my spreadsheet and I'll see what's calling to me, you know, in each of the categories. What do I want to prioritize for the next year? Um, that's not to say that, like, every now and then I'll have a chart that, I'll see and I'm like, I have to stitch this next. Um, and that becomes the priority because it's just what is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. um, so that has happened with, especially in my sampler spot in the rotation where I'm like, the, there's a chart that I have fully kitted up that I should have started last year that has gotten bumped once and it's gonna get bumped again because there's something else that I'm just like, it's a sampler that I'm like, I have to do that first. So um I do have a little bit of flexibility where if I get a new chart that's just screaming at me that you have to stitch, then then that will go into the rotation next. But other than that, I do tend like on an annual basis to look at, you know, what is it I want to stitch next? And particularly like in my seasonal slot, um, I'll kind of order it where like I just finished um, a Christmas piece. And so then my next start was an autumn piece. And after that, I'll do like a Valentine's piece and then a spring oh, okay. piece and then so on. So I kind of hit all of the seasons before I cycle back to the next season. That's, it's really neat how organized you are because if since you've I don't have it, any problem. I don't have a problem. <laughs> it's really fascinating. <laughs> well, it actually is because if you, since you've watched the other interviews, you see that a lot of people are like squirrel, whatever's, you know, shiny is, you know, they don't, there's not a whole lot of like structure to it. So it's kind of neat to learn about a different kind of method to, to like a rotation. Cause I know some people have alluded to wanting to do some sort of rotation mm -hmm. or, you know, like for someone else, you do the days of the week and you have a different type of rotation. So I, I think it's neat. Gary thinks it's funny. <laughs> But I think it's neat, so I think well, it's different. I, I would just take a dart. <laughs> Boom, that's the one I'm doing. <laughs> that's kind of like how everybody else is basically doing it. They'll do like a wheel and let the wheel pick and that kind of stuff. But, which I think but then if you look at her production, though, right? I mean, she she puts, she gets a lot of finished stuff. Yeah. So. Well, I think unless you stitch a lot of small or medium-sized pieces, would like I just I tend to gravitate toward really large designs and so I would never get anything finished if I didn't have like enforce some discipline on myself as far as this is what I'm going to work on because otherwise you know and for some people like there are a lot of progress stitchers out there and they just stitch because they enjoy the stitching process and I, I enjoy that piece of it but I get really demotivated if I don't see progress and I don't get finishes so I have to build that structure in or it's not going to happen. Yeah, and that's totally understandable because like right now for me, I've got two samplers that I'm, I'm working on plus the mirror. I don't know who I am anymore. You know, I, I like know, them. you were all small when I met you. I, I kind of like your idea and that kind of inspires me because I've now switched to like every two weeks for my video because I feel like I don't have enough progress to show the weekly mm -hmm. you know now that I've gone back to work and everything so I kind of like that idea of 
maybe I'll start looking at doing some sort of rotation where I could, you know, switch out a sampler and, and that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. well, one of the me. things I'm people me. one of the things people have been asking for is like shorts uh, that are specific topics, and that's one of the ones that's on the list to cover her rotation with. And I don't know that anybody would go as complicated as she does, but <laughs> probably even a little bit of it could help, you know? Yeah. 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 No, I, I think that a lot it's of people like that. And yeah, interesting. And, and I find it really interesting. So I might you know, take a page out of your book there and, and try it out. Um, so we are down to the last question, and it is my favorite. Um, and this is for both of you. Um, and it's what's the best thing that has happened to you so far this year? This is a challenging one for a lot of people because this year has sucked. <laughs> We're <gonna> go with <laughs> the dumpster fire. Yeah, yeah, I saw. <laughs> I'm expecting one of those. Um, it was it a candle? I think people, I'm expecting one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you saw that, right? Yeah. But, yeah, the best thing that has happened to you so far this year to try to be kind of positive and uplifting hopefully i think and i feel a little bit awkward saying this because so much of what's going on around this year and COVID is so negative mm -hmm. um but for me um because of because of what's going on with COVID, my company has been in work from home status um mandatory work from home status since the beginning of march mm -hmm. and that's going to happen at least through october and quite frankly for me probably into 2021 if not beyond yeah. um and because um and you know this just because you know about my schedule but um my commute is is horrific and so being able to work from home especially because work has been insanely busy this year for me um has been it's been such a gift i think i would have lost my marbles if i was still having to do that commute um, on top of everything else. And yeah, so really crazy. like working in yoga pants and not wearing makeup and like not not having to get up at 4.30 in the morning. I'm, I'm happy about the no makeup and yoga pants. Yeah. For eight, such a good 83 days now. <laughs> it just keeps getting bad. Because <laughs> you're not counting or anything. <laughs> no. That's funny. I know, I feel like his shoulders droop a little bit more every time I'm like, guess what? They extended our work from home. He's like, yay. I don't have any shoulders. <laughs> We're gone now after 83 days or whatever. <laughs> um, I, I think it would be great to work from home. I wish that we were still, you know, doing the same thing, but. Well, I'll tell you, the, the, the only thing you'd be careful about when, when working at home is, is have a place where you're going to work um and when you're done working don't go in there yep. um yep. don't check email uh because what there's a lot of productivity going on right now um because people are home um instead of you know they, they just don't stop they don't need to mm -hmm. that is a good point mm -hmm. i break that rule every day <laughs> i'm sure you do i'm sure you do <laughs> you, what's, what Oh, I was gonna say that's the best thing that happened to you. Yeah, what this year? Yeah. Um, I don't know. This has been this year has been kind of. <laughs> <meh. laughs> you know? Um, I'm not gonna get all global. What I'll say is that um, it, it's I, I'm very purpose. I'm a very purposeful person, uh, and I don't care if I don't have a number of likes or dislikes or whatever for social media. I'm going to slowly and purposely build my business. Um, and I started to get a trickle and then a little bit more of a trickle because it started about two years ago mm -hmm. and then COVID hit and everything stopped. And that sounds like it's negative, but it's really not because the end result is, is I'm home now and I'm learning more about my craft and practicing more things that if I were out working, I wouldn't get to, I'd, I would hone these, but not as quickly. Mm -hmm. So everything I'm doing is is making me a far better photographer, a far better videographer, a far better businessman um, mm -hmm. in this time frame. So yeah, it, it kind of bites, um, and I and I don't I'm not, and I say that for me. Uh, for other people who've lost their lives, it, it's certainly more than bites, especially if they've lost loved loved ones as well. Uh, well, I guess that didn't make a lot of sense, but you get what I'm saying. Um, 
yeah, it bites. Um, I'd rather be out working, but when I do hit the field, I'm I'm going to have the skill sets that they're looking for. You yeah, know? you'll so, be a lot sharper because you slowed yeah. down and kind of, you know, yeah. took your time to to sharpen everything up. So, yeah, I I know, but and I I say this in a lot of my interviews, <laughs> you know, that COVID is is horrible and there's no, I mean, there's not much that we can do about it, but I think that there is still a lot of of happiness that has come out of it, if that makes sense. Like, you know, for me, it's, it's these these interviews and these Zoom meetups that I host. I've met people from all over the world that I never would have met if it weren't for having to be, you know, stuck at home. Yeah, the virus is horrible. But I think for you, like you slowed down and like honed your skills and that kind of stuff. So you're ready to go. Amy, not so much. I mean, Amy, you're still working no. quite a bit. Um, but you know, you it, the positive is you don't have that nasty commute at least. You know, yeah. so there's there's always a positive in it. Even you know, I don't want to downplay the virus at all. But that's why I always like to end this um, the interviews on just you know something positive that has happened in the year, just because it's just been it's been horrible. It's, it's just been horrible. horrible. So. But there's a silver lining to every cloud if you're willing to yeah. look for it. And and you're right. It's like you have to take the time to think, okay, where's the blessing in the difficulty? Because that's what gets you through. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, kind of to your point about the slowing down for people, as hard as it's been for so many people, it's been interesting to see how folks have taken this time and and turned it into, you know, new interests or new ways of connecting like you did. You know, I have three friends, um, four four friends, actually, one of whom I taught to stitch. So I taught my dad to stitch last Mm -hmm. year. Um, But I have a a really close friend who she asked me to teach her how to cross stitch. So I taught her to cross stitch. And so that's been she's that's been kind of keeping her sane through all of this as she's getting more into it. And then I have three other friends who learned to stitch when they were little girls. And now they're picking it back up, you know, 20, 25, 35 years later, and giving it a go again. And I just think that is so fun that um, like spreading the stitchy love and bringing new people into the fold and kind of, yeah. you know, bringing, bringing people into the craft and into new ways of, of, um, of enjoying a quieter life. And I think that's a really, that's another nice positive that's happened this year. And that's one of the things I wanted to do is make her show accessible. Um, you know, and so I do whatever I can to, make it entertaining and make sure that people actually, you know, want to watch it, you know, and I'm not, it, she's, she's, no matter what you do, she's the star of it. If you will, if you can say star, don't, don't even think about it. We're not, <laughs> if you can say that she's, she's who's being filmed, I'm just blah, blah, but it's, it's us really. What yeah. you're seeing is us. So yeah. Yeah. we're having fun with it. Yeah. You know? I, and that definitely comes through in the videos for sure. And that's why I really wanted, I'm, I'm glad that you said yes. Um, because that, that's why I wanted you in the interview so that both of you, you know, were were showcased. So, yeah, I think I think that your channel is is just gonna blow up. It it already has, and there's only three <laughs> there's only three videos out. So, <laughs> um, so I think a lot of people are gonna are gonna love learning more about you guys. So, um, Thank you. oh, number four is in editing. Should have that out soon. <laughs> We'd have that out before this comes out. Maybe even number five. Um, but one thing I did want to say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, no, is sorry. we read the comments and we're going to make changes so that pictures stay up longer, text is clearer, as we can. Um, but we will make, we'll, we're listening. Nice. That's surprising. <laughs> there, I, there's, there's people that like leave comments about you know leaving the pictures i because i don't get it <laughs> i i don't get any like feedback on mine so that's gonna be <laughs> <That's not my> <laughs> <laughs> i know that that's neat though that it is neat. it's it's <laughs> and yeah really yeah, yeah. It, yeah so far nobody i think she's got like one thumbs down <laughs> and they didn't say why so they yeah they typically don't i, I don't like it I, I turned off my likes and dislikes, especially when I started the interviews. That's that's pretty smart. Yeah. yeah There's just too many trolls and people don't they don't leave comments. They just they'll just hit dislike. So Yeah. It used to bother me when I got my first one. I actually since I'm an emotional person, I actually like cried because I didn't understand mm-hmm. what I did. 
and it's just because I'm, I'm emotional. Um, but now I'm just like, you know, what, whatever. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> right? Either like, way. You don't have to like what I got going on. Just exactly. move along. Move along. Okay. Know? But this isn't you know, for you. I think that you're doing great, and I'm glad that you're getting feedback. But you know, just continue to do what you're doing. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it at all. It's pretty cool. It's, it looks very professional. Um, and Amy, you do an amazing job just sitting there, and just the way that you present yourself is even more professional than a lot of us. Just like you know, <laughs> sitting there talking. I'm not. I'm serious though and i'm sure a lot of people will agree um with that so um thank but you. thank you guys both so much for taking time out of your evening to do this thanks for week. having us i really appreciate it it was a lot of laughs, <laughs> a lot of fun <laughs> um a lot of hiccups now that it's been recording this whole time just so everybody <laughs> knows we had to do this twice <laughs> um <Thank you. laughs> so they're very patient um and still just as genuine the second time Yay! <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much and we'll just say bye to Floss Tubes. So bye everybody. Bye Floss Tubes.